Good afternoon and welcome to this session of the Queen's Roundtable. I'm Evangelist Prophetess Valerie Ammons and I am glad that you've chosen to break bread with me today. So without any further ado, we're going to go straight to the throne. Almighty God in your precious Son Jesus' name, if and when I said something that did not glorify you, that I misrepresented you, God, I repent right now in Jesus' name. God, I praise and thank you for being a forgiving and a forgetting God. God, I praise and thank you for what you're doing for the Queen's Roundtable, you TV and all of your children all over the world. God, I praise and thank you for loving us unconditionally. And you said you would hold no good thing from us. And God, we're walking in your righteousness right now in Jesus' name. Thank you. And again, welcome. I've been haven't been here for a few weeks, and I apologize. I've been um, doing some other things. Actually, went back to work. So, but I've still been keeping up with. Um, the young lady that I had on the show was talking about two of her children being killed in Chicago and we're going to kind of stay on that subject and I've been doing a lot a lot of research about it and a lot of things that um, I was trying to put together how do we combat this how can we as queens which we're the ones who's usually raising the children and unfortunately sometimes we're raising them without a husband or a father figure in the house and so we have to learn how to be a mother and a father which is not an easy task because we know how to be a mother but being a father is somewhat of a difficult chore if you don't know what what men like and how men do things so it would be very hard for us to raise a male child. It's not impossible. I've known women that's done it. I've done it for uh, some years, but uh, it is much easier if you do have a male positive figure into your children's lives. And so I started thinking about, you know, uh, one block at a time, we want to take back our communities one block at a time, but it really has to start with the person or the people who are the head of the households in that community. So in other words, it has to start with your family, Queen. And if you're the head of the family, Queen, it's got that problem, that rests on your shoulders. I don't believe that there's one mother out here that does not want to protect their children. I don't believe that at all. And I know that if you attack one of my children, I will become the lioness in the jungle, wait, able to lay my life down to protect them. Now, w what I'm saying about one family at a time, Queens, we got to look in on ourselves. We got to see what we are bringing to the table in the, in the line of protection for our children. And that actually starts with the environment in which they're being raised. I thought about that over and over and over again. And the first thing that God, when I talked to God, he, he gave me Proverbs 31 and 10 about a virtuous woman. You know, and, and in that scripture, Proverbs 31 and 10, it talks about, you know, who you are and your worth. And even at the first, Proverbs 31, the 10th uh, verse, it says, a wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more, than, far more than rubies. And a rubies is a precious gem. And so, queens, if we're worth far more than that, far more than the ruby, then we are a precious gem in God's eyesight. And we should conduct ourselves like one of God's leading ladies. You know, we want to always exemplify the character of God. And we can do that because it says that in, in Genesis um, 1 and 27 that we are made in his image and likeness. And so if we are made in his image and likeness, the strands of DNA that is in our blood came from God. So we can act like God. Our character should be that of God's character. And that way we will raise our children in a righteous way and take back your family and your block. Be that catalyst for your block. Now, and, and, and don't just stop at your family and your block. Go to the police station. Go to the chief of police and, and set up an appointment to talk with him about your concerns Start it yourself because you have to be a village keeper, 
Are you a village keeper? Maya Angelou said that it takes a village to raise a child. So my question to you is, are you a village keeper? Are you the one who's looking out for the children that's in the village where you live? If I am a village keeper, all of the children in the village, they are like my children. So I'm going to look after them. See, when I was raised up and back in the 1950s, you, if some older person came and told you, told my parents something about what I did wrong, my parent never questioned them. I got it. I got the, the, um, the, the punishment because of what they said. And maybe the person who saw me doing it, they might have punished me too. But it kept you in check. It kept you safe, knowing that somebody is watching. But see, these children now, if we don't get them in check, if we don't monitor what they're watching and who they're with and who they're talking to on Facebook, if we're not monitoring that, then we're leaving them without a village keeper. We're leaving them to keep themselves. Children can't keep themselves. I'm sorry, it doesn't work. They have too much time on their hands, and then they start doing things, especially if there's a situation in the home that's keeping them on a, uh, keeping their spirit unrest, not at rest. It is always turmoil going. See, parents, kings and queens, we have got to, to know what we're doing when, when we start stepping out into marriage and, and, and into courtship. We need to know what we're doing. And when you do not build a marriage on a firm foundation, then it's going to crumble later on. So you have to b build your marriage and your relationship on a firm foundation. And, and um, you know, Queens, a lot of times I see us, we are, we are accepting a little bit. And we, I've gone over this multiple times, but it needs being said again. Don't you ever settle for a little bit. God is a humongous God, and his love is unconditional. His love covers a multitude of sins. His love is effervescent. His love is, 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 is uh, that agape love. It's unconditional, unconditional. And he loves us. He forgets our sins, and he just continues to love us. Love yourself, queens. Love yourself. And when you love yourself, then you're able to, to be that woman who, who, who worth is far more than rubies. To be that woman who can stand in the council, who can go to the chief of police, who can go to the city councilman, who can go to the state representative and say, I, no more will I accept this brutality of our African-American children. I won't accept that. But you got to know who you are and whose you are and know the direction in which you're going and to make this work. It is workable, but you got to work it, queens. You have to work it. You have to be that village keeper to keep all of our children safe. And we want to love all of the children in the community. Have block club meetings. Have somebody who is standing on the, on the bus stops, you know, who might not have to work, watching our children. It is imperative because once people see that you are out there, they'll go someplace else. And I'm not wanting them to go someplace else because I want us to come together collectively as the body of Christ, watching out for each other. These children are my future. These children are our future. And there's some things that you just cannot allow your children to watch. Some of these videos, the ones that the women are tapping each other on the behind, and, 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 and you don't see... You don't see that going on. You should not allow your children to see that, to watch that. They're talking about the police ain't this and that. There are good police too. 
There are good policemen out there. I've seen videos where policemen, uh, Af uh, Caucasian policemen, are out there dancing with the, with the black community trying to build a relationship to know that I am here to protect you. And we can then weed out the bad ones. But we need to come together as one and be on one accord and stand together and be that catalyst that is going to move forward. We cannot afford to regress. We have to always be moving forward, walking in positivity, speaking positivity. God said that you can speak these things into existence because life and death is in the power of the tongue. Use your tongue. Use your God-given right, your promises that God has given you. You know, he said he would withhold no good thing from you. You have to do something, and that is to, is to love your neighbor like you love yourself. We can do this. It is workable. I do not want to see another child, African-American child, lie in the streets because he has been killed by the person that we pay their salaries to protect us. It is that's, that's unacceptable. It is time for it to stop. And we can stop it. But we have to come together and stay together. Stay together as a whole. I need you. You need me. We are all a part of God's body. I need you. I need you to look out for my grandchildren. I need you to look out for my nieces and nephews. And I, in turn, will do the same for you. Queens, we got to start looking at ourselves and stop allowing ourselves to be treated anything less than that ruby, than that precious gem, than that leading lady. Our children has to see you stand up in the council and, and, and be looked as, upon as an intelligent African-American woman or Caucasian woman or Asian woman who is looking out for the village. We have to stop this unnecessary rhetoric with another woman by some, a, 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 a man. We don't own anybody. And you can't make people do anything that they don't want to do. Live for you. Live for your children. Love you. Love your children. And if you, and if you want a mate, Ask God to send you one. As in Proverbs 18, it says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. So that means, queens, we don't look. We are to be sought after because we are that precious gem. And we want to show that to our daughters. And we want to show that to our sons on how a woman should be treated and our daughters on how they should be treated. We will not accept anything less than being treated like that precious gem that we are. Uh, and, and I want you to get this young queens, young princesses, it says here in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, through 19 and 20, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. It is a temple of God. It is not to be defiled by having sex when you're not married. Virginity is not to be broken until your wedding night. Teach your children that. Teach them who they are and whose they are. And teach them to be that leader. That when they come, when, when someone comes up to them with garbage, that is not how you've been taught. That's not what my mother told me. And, I, and if you love me, you will live up to my standard. And my standard is, is that this is my body. And just because you talk sweet nothings into my ear, that those will just pass through one and come out the other because my mindset has been taught the environment in which I live, Queens, which is your duty, your responsibility to set up that environment 
my mother and my father told me that I am the righteousness of God and I will not defile my body. I'm a precious, my body is a precious commodity. It is mine. And I will not give it to anybody other than my husband on my wedding night. Queens, teach your princesses that their body is a holy temple. Teach your prince that their body is a holy temple to be shared with his wife on his wedding night. See, we've been living by those double standards. And if we want to make a, a difference in the community, our banners have to be held high. And when their friends come over, this is what's being taught in this house. Get your lady friends, your neighbors together and stop talking about the gossip and talk about how you are going to build your community and to being that place. Invite the policeman that's over to your block club meeting. Invite them over. Engage them positively. Positively engage them. I want you to be a part of my community. I pay your salary. I want you involved in my community. I want you to see what we expect and tell me what you expect. And we're going to weed out the ones where we do not come together on the same, on, be on the same page coming to the period at the same time because then my children are in jeopardy. And I will not tolerate my children being in jeopardy. This is why I'm making these efforts to make this community a better place. And I believe that there are more good policemen than they are bad. So we need to come together and weed those bad ones out. We need to come together and do a background check. Yes, we need to be doing background checks on them. We want to stop the racial profiling. But we need to teach our children how to do and what to do when they're approached by the policeman. And we need to teach them to stay out of that arena go to school, get you a good education. And now I know, I know, I've seen how there was a gentleman going to, an uh, African-American gentleman who was going to the Emmys and got stopped by the policeman. Now he's going to the Emmys uh, to receive an award and he's stopped by the policeman. They're racial profiling him. Well, when we're stopped, we need to say, my hands are up. I don't have any weapon. I am going here. And you know what? Sometimes now we got to have our cell phones in the position always to, to be able to video, to make people know what is going on. Make sure that you go to the, the meetings of the, the city councilmen to make sure that our policemen have the video cameras on their clothes and in their cars. That's what we want to do. We want to stop with the tasing and get something that's going to truly protect us. Truly protect us by having a video camera on their clothes. So that has cut down on uh, brutality and abuse in, uh, in other cities. So that's what we want to do. We want to spend our tax dollars on protecting us and them and building a community that is, is righteousness, that is, 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 a, is glorious, and that is fun, that is peaceful, that is joyful, that we can actually sit on our porch and do not have to worry about somebody coming by shooting us. Or, 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 or taking advantage of our elderly. Our elderly paved the way for us, and we need to protect them also. Because, see, that's part of, of, of your tithes and offering is helping the widower and the orphan. So we need to start doing that. We want to set up a structure in our community where we look out. We want to teach our children to help the widower. But we want to make sure that the widower is not pedophile, is not, uh, been, you know, so we need to do background checks. We need to know what's going on in our community and who lives in our community. So therefore, we need to get involved. Don't wait for the next person. You be the first person. You start it off.
Because you, if your children are out there, they're taking a chance on something being done to them. So we want to be village keepers. That's my challenge. We have an ice challenge and all of that. My challenge to you is to be a village keeper. My challenge to you is to start the block club and be the catalyst. Invite the police officer and uh, go to the police chief, have a meeting, find out who's the officers in your particular area. Invite them to your block club meeting. Get involved, engage your neighbors, engage your children. And the neighbor that is, is saying, well, my child is strapped in my, engage them in another way to change their mindsets. Let them know that you need them to be a, a positive role model in this community. In this community. And then you can also let them know, I'm not tolerating any of the garbage. If you do not fix this, if you do not keep your child from bullying, then we're going to, we're going to, you leave us no recourse but to call the police because we're not, we're going to live in a peaceful environment. And Queens, you have to set up that environment. Kings, you have to set up that environment. Prince and princess, look out for your brothers and sisters. You have to set up that environment. Cover your children with, with your love and, and, and God's blessings and the blood of Jesus. Cover them. We are in a time where we need to stick together more than anything. And I am, I am challenging you to start coming together and being that virtuous woman, that king among kings, that prince that sets the example in his community, that princess that sets the example, who holds their banner high and says that I am not a piece of garbage. God did not make garbage. I am of royal priesthood. I am a precious gem. I am one of God's leading ladies. I am one of God's leading kings. And I will not accept anything other than that. I am saving myself for God's glory to live peacefully. And God said that he said, Jesus, that we would have life and have it more abundantly. Do you think this is an abundant life when you're scared to go outside? You're scared to let your children stand on the bus stop? But you can take it back. You can take it back and be back takers. Be village keepers. Be, be, be a person who is going to be the catalyst in starting village keeping. Stand out on the corners when, uh, where the children are in the, in the morning, just looking. Report anything that you see that, do, that does not look right. Report it. Keep your block safe. Keep your block peaceful. Keep the rhetoric and the junk out of your block. Be that example. Be that person. Be that great humanitarian. Be that person who is like me. I, I don't have little bitty children that I'm raising. I've raised my children already. But I have grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And I want them to be safe. And I want you to be safe. I want the elderly to be safe. I want this to be peaceful. And we can do that. We can be peacemakers. But it starts in your house. Queens, and if you are by yourself raising your children, you have to be that virtuous woman. You have to know your worth. And don't settle for a man who's going to come in your house and sell drugs and bring uh, um, tra travesty and, and, and bring, bring hum uh, junk into your home just because he got a dollar. Trust God. God to give you more dollars and more peace than the drug dealer can ever give you because they're going to eventually come in your house and take your children. If you need help, 
go on queensroundtable.com. Just go there and I will do whatever I am. And things are going to start happening. We're going to start having meetings for little prince and princesses. We're going to start doing things in the community to let us know, to let the little children know who they are, whose they are, and how much they are worth and that their bodies are precious commodities. They are precious in the sight of God. And we have to instill that into them, queens and kings. We have to be that catalyst. We have to be at Romans 12 and 2 to change the mindsets, to set the tone, to build an environment where there is peace. One house at a time, one block at a time, one community at a time, which will reach the world. And we can do it. Change your mindset to say, yes, I can. I am a village keeper. I am a village keeper. I will look out for my neighbor. I need my neighbor. My future is at stake if I do not set that example. It's up to us. It's up to us. Get involved. Engage your children, your community, your block, your family, and your world, and peace be unto you.